my favorite number. <laughs> favorite number? Who yeah. wears is it? Is it a player? Uh no, it's my birthday. Uh, September oh, okay. 7th. But Philip Rivers wears seventeen. Wore seventeen. Devonte Adams wears seventeen. <laughs> All of the best players wear seventeen. <laughs> Philip Rivers, okay. <laughs> he was good. Oh, the, <laughs> so the first thing after we clone the GitHub. So let's just try it one more time. Prem minus RF, JS course. Git is a distributed version control system that tracks versions of files. So basically, if you want to share your code, you use a program called Git. It's very uh, de facto. Everyone uses it. And basically, people can work on the same code base, but branch out and then work on their own pace. So we'll go back to the GitHub repository. We'll type in the HTTPS link here so you press on the green button and then HTTPS and copy this link and what you want to do is say git clone on that URL so you can just copy it and paste it and cloning and then you'll have the your uh, the repository here and from here you can just open your Visual Studio code and first we'll go through the readme so this is the JS course it's the let fill JS course and during the first lesson, we'll go through the intro and data types. So here, how this is laid out is there's the readme. You can add resources here. And then there are going to be uh, lessons, so little modules. So we'll go through the intro and the data types. And each of these uh, modules have a readme. And it good to, it'll be good to reference there. And then you have exercises for when you're done with all the modules. So let's go to intro, tools needed, readme. So intro to JavaScript. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is a scripting language that is interpreted line by line and not compiled. So JavaScript is a scripting language and more lower level languages like C++ or C are actually compiled. Um, that meaning JavaScript can run in the browser and it can change any moment. But uh, older program like C++ or C You'll have to send the whole file and then you get the machine code back. And it is, uh, it, it is used for web pages to add interactivity. Uh, so we'll get into that. That's in DOM manipulation. It is also used in non-browser environments in the server with Node.js and others. So where is JavaScript used? JavaScript is used in client side on the browser and manipulate and add interactivity to websites. JavaScript is used in the server and to connect to databases and serve data. JavaScript is also used in other non-browser environments to execute commands in the server. So that meaning there are other uh, use cases for JavaScript, not just the server or to serve HTTP requests, but you can actually use it as a uh, scripting language or to run things like bots and all this kind of fun stuff. Who is JavaScript used by? JavaScript is used by programmers to make websites and build full stack applications. Why is JavaScript used? The reason why JavaScript is used is because it is the only language that can be run in the browser. And that's very powerful. It is used to add interactivity to websites. It is used to connect databases and serve data. How is JavaScript used? It is used by browser in the script tags to add in interactivity to websites. It is used with Node.js to connect to databases and serve data. Nice. We got through the intro. We got the tools needed. So now you have, um, you have, you have logging and you have variables. Right? So console log doesn't sound foreign and var, let, and const do not, do not sound um, foreign to you now, right? Because we're going to need them for the uh, next parts. Okay. All right. So data types and objects is our, um, we'll go back to the readme. And we said, uh, in order, we'll go through intro and then data types. So we'll go to the folder data types and we'll go to the readme. There are primitives in data. So there's, um, Primitives meaning like the smallest pieces of data. You can call them atoms, kind of mm -hmm. like uh, strings. So these are like, uh, do you know like um, primary colors like yellow, red, and blue? Yeah, yeah. Primary, and secondary, tertiary. Exactly. So mm -hmm. when you're mixing like red and blue, you can kind of like make other pieces of like uh, data. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of like to think about it. So you have primitives like string, numbers, and booleans. Honestly, programming is just playing around with these three data types that we talked about from the intro. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I wanted to talk about an intro and then segue into here. So we have string numbers, strings, numbers, and booleans. And then for a later tutorial, we have other primitives called like big int. So that's just like a referencing a big number. So you cannot mix like a regular number and a big number. And null, undefined, and symbol. And honestly, I don't even use big int or symbol that much. So null and undefined are like the um the ones that we'll learn that we'll um get into later. But today all we're gonna think about is string number and boolean. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that works. All right, so non-primitives, like things that uh, you put together are probably like array, arrays and objects. Arrays being lists and objects being key value pairs. That might not make sense now, but it will in about five minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> and we also have operators. So you need to be able to manipulate the data. So operators, I mean, it sounds weird, but I mean, it's just a plus, minus, divide. So you take like two numbers and you kind of divide them. And those you just um, operators are what uh, make expressions or and we'll talk about that in a second. But basically, they're just like comparisons like uh, does one equal one? Does one plus one equal two? Mm -hmm. Just um, it's just a fancy word for, um, you know, plus and minus and increment and decrement. And we'll talk about that um, we'll get into it in a second, but one that we'll uh, use today is type of a type of logs like a variable or a data, a piece of data. And it tells you if it's a string, a number or a Boolean. So type of is something we're going to use today. We're going to use type of, we're going to use variables and we're going to use um, all the data types we need. Expressions are a combination of values, variables and operators, which computes to a value. So um, just an expression would be like one plus one. That's an expression. So that's um, a combination of values, variables, and operators, which computes to a value. So one plus one, that's using a variable, um, an operator, and another variable. And then that computes to a value, right? It sounds um, like these uh, computes and it's like programming terms, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's very simple. Expressions can be used in many places in JavaScript, including as arguments to functions, which we'll get in today, uh, in, control, in control structures, which we'll get in today, and in assignments and in return statements. So an example of an expression is three plus four. That's an expression. And then we can even add on more equals seven and three plus four does three plus four equal seven yes so this would be a true it would compute into true three plus four right mm -hmm. this would equal seven but now i'm i made a uh, comparison and i'm asking does three plus four equal seven uh i see okay okay i got it that's that's all i was saying like um you could just keep on going on and on though right three plus mm -hmm. four um, does it equal seven, seven times seven? False, right? And this, mm -hmm. is, this is actually a whole expression. So there are three main data types we will work with, uh, string, number, and Boolean. So string being uh, like a string, like hello world, it's just with quotes, number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and Boolean mm -hmm. being a true or false. So fun fact in JavaScript, when it interprets zero can also be false and one can be true. And that'll make more sense in our if else lesson that we're gonna go through right after. Okay. okay. Uh, type of is a great tool to find out what data type you are working with. It comes in handy in if else statements that we will learn later. So type of is, uh, right. If you run like console.log type of one, it'll give you, it'll say number. So if you see console.log type of hello, Mm -hmm. what, what do you expect to come out? Uh, the string part, right? Just that it is a string. Exactly. All right. So if I run node data types, it says string, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And then maybe, like I said, we'll follow the um, practices that I said earlier. Type of. What do you expect to come out here? 
uh, number, right? Type of 17. So should be it's a my number. Favorite. My favorite number. <laughs> favorite number? Who yeah. wears is that a, is it a player? Uh no, it's my birthday. Uh September oh, okay. 7th. <laughs> but Philip Rivers wears 17, wore 17, Devontae Adams wears 17. <laughs> All of the best players wear 17. <laughs> Philip Rivers? Okay. <laughs> he was good. Oh, <laughs> The sidearm throw? Yes. <laughs> no, no, I got to give up for Philip Rivers just because uh, he would be trash talking whether they were losing or winning. He was always. So I got to, you know, got to give him the respect for that. Always being competitive. 10 kids too. <laughs> really? Yeah, have you heard this? Yeah. No, I didn't. I did not know that. But uh, actually, I don't like, you know, uh, I'm a Raiders fan. So mm-hmm. we were all getting beat by the Chargers at that time. Yeah, LT. He's too. He's too good at that Dane time. <laughs> exactly. Sean Merriman. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. So, so here, if we console that log, type of and then true, what do you expect to? Come uh, b- uh, boolean, right? Exactly. So I know this is like redundant and it's very easy, but it's just a uh, kind of hammering into your brain. I think. Oh yeah, it's good. It's good. So type of is very powerful. I'm just saying, because, like, let's just say uh, you are in, like, a for loop or something or an if-else, and you say, hey, if this variable is a string, I want to handle it this way. If it's mm-hmm. a number, I want to handle it this way. And it'll be it'll be handy uh, later on. I think. Okay. I have four exercises down here. I'm not going to help you whatsoever. Uh, so oh. just uh, make a variable using var that as a string. Yeah, d- don't even think about it. Just put A. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like A, B, J. Cool. Uh, make a variable using constants a number. Cons b equals forty two. Oh, forty five is good. Forty two, the answer to life. No. <laughs> <laughs> make a variable let that's a boolean. Oh, Jesus. Uh, let c. But if it's a boolean, like it's gotta be one or the other, right? Exactly. I don't know. I don't know about that. Reassign above variable into the opposite. Hmm. You see how there's a red line now? Mm-hmm. So we cannot redeclare block scope variable C. So when you're reassigning, uh, like uh, the, the reason why it's let, you don't need to initiate it anymore. So you can just get rid of the let. Oh, uh, okay. That's the meaning of, that's uh, the, the power of let. Like you initiate it once and you don't need to use an initializer again. So you can okay. honestly think like var const or let or like initializers mm-hmm. i think that's what the, like the uh it'll it'll like throw an error like that so you already initialized c and now you're just reassigning c okay does that make sense yeah that makes sense and i can mm-hmm. do that with uh var also but if i do const again then it's going to throw an error because it's... exactly okay so if you do like b equals 42 it's going to throw an error we can try okay. it so if we run node data types we get a big assignment to constant variable it's not okay I see. Okay. line 27 line 27 right there it is yeah okay but we don't have the error on 31 mm-hmm. so can you on line 32 can you console log the four very uh the three variables we made a b and c all in one line uh console.log. All right. And why don't you click save or command S? Did it work? Yes. And then why don't you run it in the uh, terminal here? So then if we put console.log type of A, type of B, type of C, what do you expect this to, uh, what do you expect line 34 to output? Uh, string. So we'll say string, string number Boolean. Exactly. So why don't you try to run that and, uh, see if you're correct. You can just hit right arrow. So you don't have to type it out all the time. There it is. All right. You got it. Amazing. The right arrow part. That's what I'm talking about. I saw the predictive text. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Right arrow. Or tab. (laughs) Any questions so far? Uh, no, no, I think it's, I think that's, 
I think it's good. Okay, so we'll now we have out. we have now we have string, number, and boolean. We know how to play around with those, and now we can use type of, and we can hold them in variables and log them. So now you have some tools in your belt, right? Mm -hmm. You have console log, you have logging, you have variables, and you have data like strings and booleans and numbers. Mm -hmm. You have type of, so we have those. All right, so we're gonna go into operators. So those are that's like the one plus one, just creating expressions with what you learned just now. Okay. 